Hello, dears. I'm Mel. Hello, I'm Anne Robinson. And welcome to Casting Couch, the show that opens a can of celebrity worms and watches them wriggle. And tonight our first team is captained by Winsome, Lusum, Society Accessory, Tamara Beckwith. Joining Tamara, as always, he's rough, he's tough, but for a fiver, I'll let him photograph me in the buff. It's comedian Kevin Day. And their special guest is Pauline McClinn, soon to be seen in The Dark Ages. Pauline is most famous for playing Mrs. Doyle and Father Ted, the show that allowed us all to swear on telly with words like feck. Let's hope she doesn't bellock up the show tonight, the stupid botch. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tamara Armistein! As ever, their opponents are led by resident goatee good time boy himself, Chris Moyles. And always at Chris's side, because he's attached to him by a special life-giving hose, is comedian Marcus Bridstock. <laughs> their special guest is star of the Grimleys and Kiss Me Kate, actress Amanda Holden. After the show, Amanda's looking forward to a session of hot Les action when she goes home to her husband, Les Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Chris's team! <laughs> First round features celebrities promoting things in unexpected and intriguing ways. Chris's team, his self-styled princess of Basil and Denise Van Atten, and we want to know, what the devil's she promoting? That's a nasty sneeze, if ever I saw it. Or she's playing with JK's brain while people look on. That is the biggest hairdryer I've ever seen. She's got a nasty earwax problem as well, by the look of it. Is she promoting any old shite for money week, like celebrities do? <laughs> look! Fags! Twigs! Hey! <laughs> what will you do when you get offered a million pounds to get offered some twigs next week, then? Do you know, you I, don't, turn I, it down. I don't think anybody in the world's ever been offered a million pounds to promote twigs. You don't know. I might sell. Pretty much put a bet on it. But I don't think you could promote twigs, though, darling, could you? <laughs> Did anything fall out? No, nothing fell out because there's nothing there in the first place at all. <laughs> Is she launching National Liposuction Week? Yeah. Is that something out of Vanessa Feltz's arm? Yeah. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I'm going to be so ashamed of me. <laughs> what is Les going to say when you get home? <laughs> In the great tradition of Mel and Sue, she's launching uh, National Bread Week. Yeah, absolutely. Is the correct hey! The answer is that Denise is promoting bread as part of a government initiative encouraging 18 to 24 year olds to tuck into a lovely loaf. Well, she's got to run across. <laughs> <laughs> Denise's surname is actually just Alton. She added the van at drama school. And being from Essex, the van was white, parked illegally, and crammed full of stolen microwaves. <laughs> Tomorrow's team, take a look at this clip of Paige Free Stunner. Jordan, what we want to know is, what on earth is she promoting? <laughs> Ooh. Take exception to when I look dead heat in a Zeppelin ring. <laughs> we'll take exception to the word stunner, unless you mean, she earns how much? I'm stunned. <laughs> <laughs> and here you go, is it bin bag for bimbos? <laughs> <laughs> I can't take women seriously if I've only got one name. If she's too dim, to remember a second name. <laughs> really. So what do you think, Mel? Two? <laughs> I think I Will you discipline him later in the dungeon suite tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> I always put ideas like that in my head. I've got to sleep tonight. Like, we'll do that. That's fantastic, that chin on the shoulder. Oh, stop it. Because I put super glue in this. Try it again. <laughs> I wonder why it doesn't matter how they will fight the arms, but obviously if they want to steady her, they should... <laughs> There's a lot more balance in front. I don't, I don't, they're not actually holding her, Pauline. They're about to spin around really quickly, so she bores down to the centre of the earth. <laughs> she's, she's, got very, she's got very pointed her, yeah. feet. Yeah. Did you know that about Jordan? Very pointed feet. Can you imagine the noise she's making? If you took out the fuse things as well, she'd be like... <laughs> We're going to have to try. You're not, you're not right. Let's go over to the other side. You know, I think it was a demonstration from those blokes showing how they would catch streakers at Twickenham with a big sort of Guinness <laughs> pot. They just mm. is the correct, the correct answer. answer. No, 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 no. Jordan is indeed demonstrating a new device to prevent us seeing the naughty bits of streakers 
sports events. <laughs> Jordan once increased her 36C breast to 36D. She said she didn't really want bigger breasts. It was just her way of learning the alphabet. <laughs> And the scores at the end of that round, it's Tamara trailing with a non-aristocratic nil. And Chris Bad Boy Moyles' his team have got three. <laughs> Time for the gossip round now. We give each side of celebrities and ask what strange, weirdo, gossipy kind of fact is connected to them. Tamara Rama. Here's punch bag faced Hollywood star Mickey Rourke and his chihuahua Bo Jack. Can you tell us how did the little chihuahua cause Mickey problems at work? The little tiny Mexican hairless dog. And, and what about the chihuahua? He's not a hairless chihuahua, he's a hairy chihuahua. There's no hair on that chihuahua. The chihuahua's on the right, Kevin, on the right. <laughs> I used to work in Mexico, I was a carpet kitten. But they're not in Mexico. Underlay, underlay. <laughs> I think that he wanted the chihuahua to have a bit part in the shootout scene of his movie. And I guess they probably said, I don't think he can hold the gun. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey actually walked off the set of his latest film, A Luck of the Draw, when producers wouldn't let his pet chihuahua star in a vital shootout scene. So Mickey not allowed to appear in a film with a real dog, just in a series of films that are real dogs. <laughs> Mickey proudly boasts that he once spent four whole days locked in a bedroom, keeping his girlfriend entertained. He was putting on a finger puppet version of War and Peace. Team. Your celebrity is lovely singing Lisa from Steps. Mm -hmm. And we want to know, how did a minibus recently get Lisa into trouble? Did she did she run over the boys in, in that group she's in because they're getting paid more than her? <laughs> did the bus just take them on tour and everyone realised that they were cat? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a, I think that's a really hard thing too, because Steps are a very multi-talented like, group. Um, yeah, they I, agree. I love a bit of Steps. Oh, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> but, um, is it not true that actually, um, in a former life, you were a podium dancer in a nightclub? <laughs> hey, 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 well done. Well done. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. You get it going on. You think I know the answer? Do you? I think a policeman pulled her off for uh, yeah, showing her <laughs> Oh, oh, yes, pulled her over, sorry. Because she did a moony at the back, didn't she? Corinne. Yes. Corinne! Yes! The answer is that while steps were on the way to an exclusive boys' own party, Lisa mooned out of the back of the minibus at a passing car. The car turned out to be full of undercover police officers who pulled them over and gave Lisa a stern ticking off. Poor girl, how was she to know they were a crack police unit? <laughs> Steps' first number one was a double A side of Heartbeat and Tragedy. Tragedy! The tragedy being that the members of the band all continue to have a heartbeat. <laughs> so, at the end of that hilarious round, Tamara's team have two points, Chris Moyles' has five! Yeah. In our next round, Sue and I recreate well-known celebrity incidents past and present using only the medium of mine. It's like a guinea fowl with whiplash. <laughs> All you have to do now is guess what we're describing. Tomorrow's team, you're first. Watch our bendy little bodies and guess the celebrity incident. Your time starts now. Look at my spider's frame moving to see Mel with her Mikado outfit there. Entering the arena of mine A now. good sports sock with a 1960s absolute toe-crushing mule. Release, <laughs> release the mules. Kick them free. <laughs> Now that so is a car for cow wouldn't love. <laughs> Turn bottles of champagne. Magro champagne, there we go. Tomorrow's team first. Watch our bendy bodies and guess the celebrity incident. Here we go. Dog. dog. The dog. <laughs> Vanessa Felt. The dog with big ears. The rabbit, goofy. The devil. The devil. Okay. Not the devil. Obviously. Brace yourself, Sheila. <laughs> oh, oh, you Okay. It's Camilla, Camilla Parker <laughs> Knowles. <laughs> it's Hotchifier and Camilla Parker Knowles. Oh. It's, uh, it's the princess being forced to um, Hunt. Uh, learn how to find girlfriends. I by love you, Kevin. Yes, you, you did it. You did it. Kiss me. But we knew that. We knew that you were so lovely. Wow. The answer to 
Doctor was, of course, middle-aged, let-down, juggy Prince Charles taking teenage pin up <laughs> Prince William fox hunting. <laughs> Apparently, the young lad bagged three foxes, Edward, Samantha and Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas team, here's your celebrity incident. What? Are you ready for mine? And guess. <laughs> People singing. singing, miming, oh, punching, oh, having a fight, the Gallagher's, the Gallag yeah. something to do with the Gallagher's, uh, putting someone's a, lungs out, is it a Viking concert and you've done a slice on him, <laughs> Michael Jackson <laughs> having <laughs> everything <laughs> sweet, <laughs> plastic surgery, fake breasts put on for no reason, <laughs> I've got a semi on now, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got a semi and I had a full to start with. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good mind. Thank you. Please help me with it. <laughs> Carry my in a coffin. Coffin. Oh. Your coffin. Um, uh, oh, it. So Michael Jackson has been chopped into little pieces. They've been Someone's had so much plastic surgery, <laughs> they've been killed yeah, and they're buried. Dead. Yeah. No. Hey. Are we close? Oh, I know. Is it Martin McCutcheon's career? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, the answer was Cher, who recently bought herself a plot in the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. She got it on the instalment plan. She'll be burying bits of her body, one at a time, as they slowly slide from the rest of her frame. <laughs> and the uh, scores at the end of that slightly pornographic round from Mel and I. Exciting as it was, Mel never touched me again in that way. <laughs> the scores are now team racing up at four, and the silver lead is Chris with five. Yay! <laughs> Me, That's all we've got time for in part one, but do have a look at this picture. Imagine, if you will, we splice together the DNA of two celebrities. Mm -hmm. We want to know who are the celebrity donors of this test tube baby. Mm -hmm. Test tube baby it could possibly be. Well, the answer was Alan Titchmarsh and Charlie Dimmer. Oh. <laughs> Sinister, isn't it? Now, our awards round, where we take a look at some of the more unusual accolades handed out to the stars of today and yesterday. Now, last week, young Christopher, the bad, he's angry boy of Radio 1, accused Tamara of cheating after she amazingly guessed that Cliff Richard was glove personality of the year. Came right out of the blue. It was a tad suspicious, for my yeah. liking, yeah. So naughty Tamara, no evil cheating this week. Okay? Exactly. Is that what they teach you at Cheltenham, ladies, goddammit? Chris, can you tell us what extraordinary award did Bendy face Prime Minister's wife, Cherie Blair? <laughs> in 1998. Did, is she phoning Tamara to give her all the answers for this week's quiz, by any chance? <laughs> She looks like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Terry! <laughs> Give you a trick. After the Tamara cheating business... Oh. She did cheat. She, she did, she cheated last week with the answers. She's, what was it last week? It was best... Glove. 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 Yes, yeah, Because it was something like, oh, is it something to do with cheese, hamsters? Best glove! Yeah. Out of the blue. <laughs> it was. If you remember, his little hands weren't in the picture, so I put the two together. Little <laughs> Excuse me, just because this lovely lady has some breeding and you are a big hairy peasant and don't know that people wear clothes, don't you dare wear clothes! It's time to wear It's hard to breed when her family owns half the land in the world! <laughs> Uh, I can carry three beers and two packets of crisps. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little glove, glove personality wearer of the year thing. Bluff plus bluff equals wrong. <laughs> the answer is, in fact, law personality of the year. Presented by diminutive Ronnie Corbett. Cherie recently became pregnant at the age of 45, although Tony Blair has denied that this is a PR exercise. It's a mere coincidence they've decided to call the child Vote Labour. <laughs> Cheeky little Tamara, what award did Barbara Windsor win this year? Yeah. The Abseiling Down a Giant Giraffe Award. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara, she knows the answer. Don't you, no, don't I you might know, I might know. Donne okay. nous la repasse, Tamara. Okay, if you look at the picture, she's got her arm in the picture. <gasps> Those are arms. Treble, treble, treble. Well gloves, done. We've got red gloves on. So? Gloves. <laughs> top, red, top red glove wearer of the year. Glove top glove. Is the correct answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, well done. Well done.
Oh, yeah. Scores at the end of that round. Chris Moore's team have five. Tamar Marama's team are now in the lead with six. Yes. Time now for our Celebrity Feuds round, which is a bit like the Celebrity Foods round, but with more hate and less mashed potato. <laughs> Chris's team, here's Irish ex-Virgin and Eurovision host Roman Keating and cheeky Formula One bad boy Eddie Irving. Why is Ronan so goddamn mad at Eddie? Apologies, Pauline. Um, is it Ronan's very upset because Eddie can skate with just a woolly hat on and Ronan has to wear a big helmet because he's not very good at skating as one of those ones that holds onto the edge all day. Shall I do my impression of Rowan Keating? Yeah, yeah do it. <coughs> the smile on your face, let me The answer is that Eddie Irvine, or Irvine, him, whichever Irvine. Way you pronounce it, went out with uh, Rowan's wife. Not while they were married, obviously, <coughs> but before they got married. And he's gone, you're taking everything, not going out with my missus. <laughs> No, the reason that Ronan's mad with him is that he's written a book and he says in the book that he bedded Yvonne shortly before her marriage to uh -huh. Ronan. That's what the row's about and Ronan says. Uh-oh, uh -oh. Brittany, uh-oh. In which case we will afford you one point apiece. Okay, Ronan called Eddie a spineless slime ball, or words to that effect, after the racing driver revealed he'd had a fling with Ronan's wife just before they married. Personally, I don't think Ronan should worry too much about a man who gets his nuts off in four seconds. <laughs> Tomorrow's team, here's model, singer and all-round jack of no trades, Caprice, and our very own Chris Moyles. So, <laughs> so, so <laughs> you love her. <laughs> you love her. You dare to bond with that kid. So, why does Caprice hate Chris? Because she's met him. <laughs> Yeah, since I'm in one of my hilarious comedy roadshow outfits. I, I want to come. Do you wear, do you yeah, you're that excited by looking at me dressed like that? <laughs> You've no idea. <laughs> well, tomorrow, you, you must know Caprice. I do. Fellow model, actress. Yeah. Actress. She, she's at, yeah. You're an actress. Look out her biography, says so tomorrow's an actress. I've just done three films in the past eight months. Have you? Can I just point out, I know this is a bit cruel, but tomorrow I just wrote in her pad, who is Les Dennis? <laughs> into a different question. I like to see Tamara digging her own grave on television. Digging? Tamara? That's work, leave it yeah. out. <laughs> Do you want the answer or not? Yes. yes. Caprice's assistant takes Chris's producer. And he won't play a record. And he did play her record, but he only played one line. And in a very, very mischievous way. So it wasn't actually done in a nice way, it was kind of done in Chris Moyle's fashion. Right. <laughs> Tamara is absolutely right. The answer is that when Caprice released her debut single back in July, Chris claims he could hear Caprice birthing in the middle. He played it over and over again on his Radio 1 show. Caprice was so annoyed that she threatened legal action. And in 1997 National TV Awards, Caprice wore a £250,000 diamond in her belly button. Being a supermodel, when she realised she had 24 carrots in her belly, she went straight to the toilet and made herself sick. <laughs> At the end of that round, it's Chris's goatee team training with six, but it's Tamara's tiara team on nine. <laughs> it's now time for you bench the for our last round. Teams have to guess the missing words from a series of quotes made by celebrities. Now, tomorrow's team, you're going first, and your time starts now. David Beckham said, at school, I wasn't really into girls, just what? Football. Oh, fantastic, well done. <laughs> Jordan said, the first thing I notice about a man is his what? Muscles. No, Eyes. lower. Legs. No. Thighs, buttocks. No, clothing, clothing. Oh. Shorts. Down, Trousers. lower, lower, lower. Shoes. Thank you, shoes, <laughs> shoes. Fergie <laughs> said, I always wished I had a what shaped bottom? Helicopter. Pear shaped. <laughs> Heart-shaped bottom is correct. Helicopter shape surprisingly wrong. George Michael said, I like what with a bit of meat on them. Please be careful. Hot dogs. <laughs> Chicken legs. What, what are you two Men. Are? No, no. Women. No, younger. Paddling. Yeah. Girl, female girl. 
Yeah. But then he said the one thing Britain still hasn't got right is what? A fair and equitable tax system, full employment and a properly funded health service. <laughs> She's going to be so cross because she disagrees with the politics and you've got the answer wrong. Mm. It's rat. No, it's not. Catch up. <laughs> Chris Moyle said anyone over six foot is a what? Wait for the face. No, 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 three. Tall person. Oh, oh, oh. I'm calling you now have 13 oh, points. Exactly. Ah, yes. Yeah. Marcus, you need eight to win. Eight. Eight. Your time starts now. Uh, Noel Gallagher said, uh, sure, I love Liam, but not as much as I love what? L Lennon. Vomiting. Uh, uh, drinking. Patsy. Uh, the first part you can the spoke, baby. the other half looks like big hair. Hot <laughs> noodle. Yes, correct. Uh, <laughs> the said, homemade cakes get me in the mood for what? More cakes. <laughs> Is close. Jogging. No, it's sex. Doing Miss Piggy impression. It's her eighth meal of the day. She has it between tea and supper. The, 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 um, um, oh, pass. Pass, right. Pass. 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 Julia Roberts said, on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't think about what? In My ugly ex-husband. Uh, no. Her armpits. Her armpits. Her armpits. Uh, shaving shaving them. them. Shaving her armpits. Uh, Chris Tarrant said, uh, I'm hopeless at what? Radio. Burning a friend. Dancing. Uh, oh. Oh. Which all goes to me, but the final scores are oh, Chris's team, nine points, but this week's winners are 13 points on tomorrow's yeah. team! Yeah. Well, that's it from us, and that's it for Chris's career. He's 3-1 down at this point in the series. It is thanks, however, to our guests, Marcus and Amanda, to Kevin and Pauline, and not forgetting our two captains, Chris Moyles and Tamara Beckwith. Good evening! <laughs>